Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 168. Problem, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it, shall we? 168. It says the sum of a two digit number and the number obtained by reversing its digits is 132. So we, we know that we have a number that, that has two digits in it, so it's a two digit number. Let's say for example 37, if you reverse the digit it becomes 73. And if you add up the two figures we get 0, 31, 10 plus 111, we get 110, we do not get 132. Scenario, we, scenario that we're dealing with is such that when we take the sum of the two digit number and the number obtained by reversing the digits is 132. The question is what's the sum of its digits? They're not asking for what is that number. That is not the question here. The question is what is the sum of its digits? Let's see what we can do, shall we? In order for you to understand the work that, we, that we're going to have to do here, in order for us to understand how to set up this problem, we have to understand the basic notion of how to express a, a number, a given number, whether a two digit number or a three digit number in the language of algebra. That is something we learn in video number six, in, in problem number 65, problem number 91, 111 and 122. Make sure you have watched these four problems first. Make sure you have watched number 65, 91, 111 and 122 first before you continue with this one. Again, what we have to understand is how do we express a notion of a two digit number? For example, for example, if we have a 73, how do we express that, uh, that number in the language of algebra? But 7 represents the 10 digit and 3 represents the unit digit. So do we just represent as TU? The answer is no, because in the language of algebra, if T represents some unknown quantity and U represents some unknown quantity, if you said TU, in the language of algebra, this is just T times U. That's not what we meant here. How do I express 72? Well, the way we do that, which is what we learned in number 65, the very first one problem that we did in the 91, what we learned is that 73, 73 is so cold because it tells us how many tens we have. 73 has seven tens and it tells us how many unit digits we have. We have three unit digits. 73 has seven tens and three ones. Now we can express this thing with the, with the variable t and the u. t represents the tens digit tens digit and u will represent the unit digit and how many tens do we have we have seven tens so it's going to be seven times well rather not seven times that's the unknown quantity we don't know what it is in this case of course we know we have seven of them here so that that's how many that's what t is so it's t times ten and if t happens to be seven then it will become seventy plus how many units do we have? Unit digit we have? We do not know. That's the whole point. It's an unknown quantity. So it's u times one, which is just u. And finally, we represent this t times ten would be written as ten t plus one times u will simply be u, and there is your two-digit number. We represent a notion, an idea, a concept of a two-digit number in the language of algebra by using the unknown quantity t and u, t being the ten digit and u being the unit digit, like this. They go on to tell us that when we reverse the digits and we take the sum of the two quantities is 132. If you were to reverse the digits, what would happen is that whatever the 10 digit was would become the unit digit and whatever the unit digit was would appear in the 10 digit part, so it's going to be u times 10. This is the reverse scenario. And when we add up these two quantities, we get 132. Let's do it now on the top. So the original quantity that we have is 10 times t plus the u, and when we reverse the digits, it becomes this. 10 times u plus t, and we are told that if we take our original number and, it, and we add it to the number that we obtain by reversing the digits, the sum is 132. And that's all. The rest is very simple. The rest is piece of cake. The rest is very simple, very straightforward. We can end up with 10 t plus a t, which can be 11 t and a u times a 10 u will be 11 u equals 132. Divide this entire equation by 11 and we'll find that t plus u will be 132 divided by 11 
and let, let's divide it, shall we? We're going to divide 132 by 11. How many one, 11 does 132 have? How many 11 does 132 have? What the hell do I know? Let's find out, shall we? How many 11s? How many 11s does one have? One has no 11s. One has no 11s. One is too puny to have any 11s. That one goes and joins the three, becomes 13. How many 11s does 13 have? 13 has one 11. 13 has one 11. After we take away 11 from the 13, we have a remainder of 2. The remaining 2 goes and joins this 2 and becomes 22. And 22 has 2 11s. There we go. The answer question was, what is the sum of the digits? The answer is, the sum of the digits is 12. That's it. We're done. That's all there is. Now, now I'm going to share with you now I'm going to share with you my stupidity. Okay, Here, here's another question. This is going to be a damn silly one. This is going to be a damn silly one. Just listen and, and see what happens. Originally when I put together the problem, originally when I wrote this problem, it wasn't like this. So I'm going to show you the damn silly one now. Okay, that's it, we're done here. All of this part is done, I need the room so we have to erase it. So instead of saying what is the sum of the digits, I went on to say, I went on to say that, and the, the sum of the two digit number and the number obtained by reversing the digits is 132. It goes on to say, the difference, the difference of the tens digit, I need the room, the difference of the tens digit And the unit digit is six. And then I went then the question was find the number. Find the number should not have a question mark. Find the number, that's it. That's that's how I put together that's how I put together the question originally. And then it occurred to me afterwards that uh, this will be a damn silly thing to ask. Do you know why? Can you tell why this will be a silly question? This is no longer an algebra question. It becomes a very simple, very straightforward question. Do you know why? Because what I'm thinking is that, again, this is something will occur to a lot of people. What I'm thinking is that most people will not bother with doing the algebraic work that we did before. Most people will not bother with that. They will concentrate on the second part first. We are told that the difference of the two digits is six. The difference of the two digits is six. So why don't we start out with the difference of two digits? We start out with the simplest scenario. Let's start out with one and a seven. The next one will be two and an eight. The one after that will be three and a nine. And that's all there is. Those are the only three possible scenarios. Those are the only. So most people are. What I was thinking is that most people will not. Well, most people will realize immediately that this was a damn silly thing to to say because this gives the game away. This, this, this sentence gives the game away because there are only three possible scenarios. And now when we reverse the digits, we get 71. Is that going to give us, is that going to give us 132? The answer is no, because it ends in an 8. 7 and a 1 is going to end in an 8. So that's not it. 28 is going to become 82. That's going to end in a 0. So that's not it. It ends in a 0. We want, whatever it is, whatever the hell it is, it's got to end in a 2. 39 and 93, oh there you go, 39 plus 93 is going to give us 2, carry 1, 9 plus 1 is 10, plus 3 is 13, there you go. So the question was, question was find the number, the number is 93, the number is 93. How do we know the number is 93? Because I tell you that uh, the difference between the 10 digit, it is the 10 digit which is larger than the unit digit, the difference between the 10 digit, which is going to be a bigger one, and the unit digit is 6. The number is 93. Most people are not going to bother with what I did before. That's all there is. That's all there is. But what I was thinking is that, being the nerdy person that I sometimes am, and when I say sometimes, I mean all the time, I thought people will do all the work. I thought people will do all the work. The, f the work that we did initially, the work we did initially was this part. The original problem was the number, which is this, plus the reverse of this, 10u plus t, the sum is 132, and we found out that gives us 11t plus 11u equals to 132, 
and then it goes on to say t plus u is equal to what did we find? 12. So that's our first equation. And then I thought people would say the difference of the two digits is 6. So they will say the difference is 6. So then we go on to second second equation which is t minus u is equal to 6. You add up the two equations, the u is going to cancel out and 2t equals 12 plus 6 which is 18 and therefore t is going to be 9 and if t is 9, if t is 9 from here we can figure out that u is 3. But nobody is going to be damn silly to actually do all this work. Just trial and error, trial and error of three possible scenarios will give you the answer immediately within a few seconds. That's why this one is damn silly. Bye now.